this manuscript is inspired by rapidly evolving um, management field for diabetic kidney disease. After close to two decades of uh, basing our treatments on control of uh, blood sugars and blood pressures, we are now having medications that improve survival uh, as well as uh, kidney and cardiovascular outcomes in people with diabetes and chronic kidney disease. Hi, my name is Radica Olesek. I am practicing in internist at Providence Centers of Health. And my academic appointment is with the University of Washington School of Medicine. Um, our article is titled Diabetic Kidney Disease Back in Focus, Management Field Guide for Healthcare Providers in the 21st Century. My co-author is Dr. Susan Nicholas with the uh, UCLA uh, School of Medicine uh, Nephrology Department. This uh, article will appear in October issue of uh, Mayo Clinic Proceedings. So chronic kidney disease is um, arguably um, one of the most um, important uh, complications of diabetes. Diabetic kidney disease uh, occurs in a close to 40% of all people with diabetes. Um, in 2021, International uh, Atlas of uh, Diabetes um, estimates that uh, globally uh, close to half billion people live with a diabetes. Uh, the, with a projection of an uh, increased um, number of people with diabetes to close to 800 uh, million by years 2035. Um, about 40% of all people with diabetes will develop chronic kidney disease. So it is no wonder that um, diabetic kidney disease is a leading cause of kidney failure and need for transplant and kidney replacement therapy worldwide. It is defined as a persistent uh, proteinuria of more than 30 milligrams over 24 hours uh, albumin secretion or drop in estimated pomerular filtration rate to less than 16 milliliters per uh, minute per 1.73 uh, square meters. These changes should persist um, at least three months to distinct uh, chronic kidney disease from uh, acute kidney uh, disease. Um, they happen on average at 40% of people with the diabetes. Uh, the, the prevalence is somewhat higher in people with type two diabetes. Um, uh, and some estimates that uh, about 50% of them will develop chronic kidney disease, while people with the type 1 diabetes um, have some somewhat lower uh, rates of uh, this complication, about 30%. Last 10 years, we saw a rapid progression of um, new uh, trials, cardiovascular outcome trials, bringing us new therapies. Uh, that improve um, risk of dying and quality of life, as well as the kidney, progression of kidney disease and cardiovascular disease in people with uh, diabetes and chronic kidney disease. Um, this is the cause of frequent changes of professional society recommendations, um, leaving uh, most uh, practitioners um, confused about um, appropriate management and expectations. Uh, treatment of people with diabetic kidney disease, similar to other chronic disease, is, um, starts with uh, lifestyle uh, interventions. Both KDGO and American Diabetic Association uh, recommend um, starting uh, testing people for albuminuria and glomerular filtration rate. That means testing both their urine for USCR and uh, their blood to, uh, for creatinine, which help us estimate their glomerular filtration rate. 10 years after developing uh, type one diabetes and um, at the time of diagnosis of type two diabetes. After finding someone to have elevated uh, proteinuria or GFR, we need to repeat the test um, within three to six months to confirm diagnosis of chronic kidney disease. 
at the time of this diagnosis, we should not forget that uh, people can develop kidney disease for other causes, and we should look for uh, look at the review their medical history, look for inflammatory um, diseases, uh, oncolo oncological diseases, uh, hepatitis C or HIV. Very frequently in um, uh, conditions of rapidly progressing disease or some atypical features like uh, hematuria in the urine, uh, we do perform uh, a kidney biopsy on these patients. It is important to check both blood, both BMP with the creatinine to estimate the GFR and urine to assess urine uh, creatinine albumin ratio. Uh, this helps um, with the diagnosis, but also with the risk stratification. Majority of people with diabetic kidney disease are treated by primary care providers. When the eGFR drops below 45, uh, it is... Um, suggested but not uh, strongly recommended referral to nephrology. However, once the GFI drops below um, 30 um, ml per minute, it is strongly recommended to refer a patient to a nephrologist. Also, please refer uh, a patient to a nephrology service if they have some worrisome uh, features like a rapid progression of proteinuria or drop in GFI or developing systemic features. So all patients who develop albuminuria or GFR or GFR less than uh, 60 should be started on the SGL2 inhibitor as a first-line therapy. Uh, alternatively, uh, or if uh, SGL2 is not tolerated, uh, GLP-1 receptor agonist can be uh, used. used. Uh, especially in a patient who dropped their uh, GFR less than 20 ml per minute. Uh, the GLP-1 receptor agonist should be uh, considered in, um, as a first-line therapy in people with a high um, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk or in the patients who would um, need uh, to lose some weight. Uh, SGL2 inhibitors, um, need to be discussed prior to initiation with, uh, with the patient because of their um, uh, poss possible complications, uh, primarily diabetic uh, uh, ketoacidosis associated with leukosemia. Paradoxically, use of fatty acid um, and ketones as a fuel for heart and uh, kidney function is one of the um, uh, basis for uh, beneficial effect of SGL2 uh, inhibitors but at the same time uh, put the patient on increased risk of developing DKA, which should be discussed uh, prior to initiation of the therapy. Uh, people with uh, existing um, uh, thyroid problems or pancreatitis should not be um, uh, placed on uh, GLP-1. In conclusion, we are um, first time in the uh, history of um, dealing with diabetic kidney disease have uh, uh, revolutionary uh, treatments that can help uh, reverse uh, trends of increased risk of dying, cardiovascular disease, and uh, initiation of uh, kidney replacement therapies. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter more information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.